Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you back hockey history. Today I got Dennis Polonich, NHL player from the Detroit Red Wings. How are you, Dennis? I'm doing great after the holidays. Thank you. You're welcome. This is part two. We did an uh, interview a few weeks ago and uh, want to get some more hockey history from you. Well, we'll, we'll try and accommodate you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to ask you, so when you got to the NHL, you were playing juniors. Did your style of play change at all? Did they change your style of play? Actually, uh, not not a whole lot. Um, it changed when I pl went to play junior. Uh, mm -hmm. A legendary coach by the name of Patty Janelle up in Flin Flon, um, you know, seen this tenacious, you know, hardworking, tough little farm boy and uh, kind of molded me into what I became. And, uh, you know, I was a... I was a, a checking, a defensive uh, forward, center ice, and right wing. Played against the other team's top lines, and uh, but I, I could also score. One year, I had eighteen goals and forty six points. So, um, you know, I, I uh, today today would be worth about a hundred. Uh, today would be worth about five million a year. Uh, yeah. In Detroit, I made eighty-five thousand. <laughs> oh, so the salaries. What was the average um, salary for a player back? We're talking. You're talking seventy-three, uh, seventy-four, around that area. What What was the average uh, salary? Well, we, I I I couldn't tell you for sure, no. uh, Jack, because uh, you know there was no disclosure back then. Now. Oh. You know, now you see it all over the media and, and stuff, what, what players sign for. Um, but that was the era when, you know, Bobby Clark, Reggie Leach, uh, you know, Marcel Dion, Guy Lafleur, uh, those guys were just, you know, that was the gateway. They started opening the doors and then, along, you know, along came Gretzky and, you know, things really started to... Uh, yeah, was it? Yeah, escalate. Yeah, was there any bonuses as far as like uh, putting up a certain amount of points or going to the playoffs for uh, further? Did they give you any bonuses? Yes, I, I think I think that, that was more prevalent. Uh, bonuses were more prevalent back then than they are today. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's more uh, you know team emphasis uh, today. Yeah, I talked to Wally Harris and he was telling me that back. In the fifties, guys were making uh, the highest paid guy was sixteen sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, and no, just, back I, in the fifties and sixties, it was criminal. Yeah, and then the lowest paid guy, he said, was six hundred dollars. Like, I can't yeah. believe it. Yeah, well, like, everybody they had to get jobs in the summertime to make ends meet. Yeah, yeah. So the the guy, the coach that you had, Mister Janelle, did he um, like how long did it take for him to work with you to get you up t to where you needed to be? There was he. Well, I years of, of junior so uh -huh. it was uh, you know it was a quick study and quick development and um yeah so nice. I, I, uh, I I'm very grateful and have a lot of gratitude uh, he's since deceased but oh. uh, um I know he had a lot to do with my career yeah wish there was more guys like him out there it's just not yes, enough guys uh, yes very you know character yeah. character coach yeah uh, what players did you mentor? Because you were captain of the Red Wings uh, for a few years. What players did you mentor for the Red Wings that were coming up into the system? Well, we had uh, Bill LeHead, Willie Huber that were draft choice. Mike Foligno came along. Uh, he was great. Uh, Paul Woods uh, and I, uh, you know, we kind of befriended each other. And then we brought in Reed Larson. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember him. Yeah, so, you know, I I kind of took over from, you know, Mickey Redmond, Danny Grant, Terry Harper, uh, Gary Bergman, you know, Alex Dovecchio, uh, you know, those guys. Yeah, and uh, Reed Larson, he had a shot, a uh, hard slap shot. Oh, my God, he was an American kid. Yes, he was from Minnesota. And, uh, yeah, he could rifle the puck. Uh, uh, it was a slap shot, but it was like a half slap shot. But, yeah. Very uh, good technique and a lot of velocity. I got a really funny story about Reed Larson. We were playing uh, in Minnesota, his hometown, and uh, there was an absolute storm, like a blizzard. And, uh, and we came back from the rink, and I went to the front desk, and I left a message for Reed Larson. I had the girl write it out, uh, and, and the message read, uh, Reed, uh, Hockey Night in Canada here. 
uh, we would like to do an interview with you later this afternoon. Um, so <laughs> and it was across the street in another hotel, and uh, there was no there was no interview, but I we set him up, uh-huh. and uh, we 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 watched him walk across the street in this blizzard uh, to go do the interview, and then and then uh, after uh, a half an hour or so, we went down in the lobby and just hung around there until he came back. He said, uh, how did the interview go, Reed? Oh, get out of here. There was no, there was no interview. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was an American kid, great guy, but uh, a little bit naive oh. when it came to the, to the jokes and that. But, yeah, tremendous hockey player. Yeah. At the time you were playing in the NHL, there was a World Hockey Association, which was like another NHL league which would had, I think, a dozen teams or so. I'm, I don't even really know. But what players did you guys accept the guys coming from the WHA into the NHL? Like there were guys going traded back and forth. No, I, I don't think there was any trades back and forth, but there was certainly guys leaving. You know, I remember, uh, you know, Derek Sanderson and, you know, Bobby Hull and, you know, players like that. Um, coincidentally, it's, it's really funny uh, I don't even know if, if, I, if anybody in, in the WHA had my rights and I didn't inquire mm-hmm. um, and I didn't get any phone calls, uh, you know, myself or my agent and that. I was, I was just so hell-bent on playing in the NHL, uh, I didn't care about the WHA. Well, how was the money there? I heard it was good. Like Bobby Hull was the first guy to sign a million dollars in any sport. He's the guy who opened yeah, the door. Yes, again, it's... It, uh, you know, it, it improved our situation. Uh, you know, then the NHL had to buck up and and start paying some of these guys to keep them. Mm-hmm. Did, did the did the NHL ever play a, a exhibition game against WHA teams? Did that ever happen? I don't believe so. But no? uh, as I told you in the previous in our previous uh, segment, uh, you know, I played. I, that's how I ended up playing against Gordy Howe and taking the opening mm-hmm. faceoff against oh, yeah. them. Yeah, the Hartford Whalers became, yeah. uh, the NHL. you know, an, an NHL team. And then, uh, you know, there was Cleveland Barons and, you know, a few other teams that uh, that expanded into the NHL. Yeah. I was just curious if that ever happened during the 70s where they just, just say, hey, let's play you guys and see who's better, but just never did. So that's, uh, no, I don't know. think, uh, not, that, not to my yeah, knowledge. Yeah. And uh, Ray Bork entered the league in 79. How was he when he arrived? Was he a standout in the league? Did you ever play oh, against he, him? Oh, yes. He was unbelievable. And actually, I had a, a major penalty with him. I had a fight with him. Really? Um, yes, and I ended up breaking his jaw. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, that altercation is on uh, YouTube. But, um, yeah, he was uh, an incredible player. And his skating, was it like at that time, you know, the new uh, up and coming players, would they, uh, was different training too. The training was changing too, the way they were well, Yes, and I remember, he, you know, he was in that uh, uh, Paul Coffey, yeah. you know, category. They, 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 they could be at one end of the ice and next thing you know, uh, they're down at the other end, uh, you know, on the other end of the ice. They played the whole ice. He, uh, he, he kind of revolutionized the game as well. Yeah. And there was not much off-ice training back in the day. I knew that the Sabres were doing it in the 70s off-ice, but did your team do any off-ice training that they have, like, today, dry land training? They, they tried to implement that. Um, they couldn't enforce it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the players were kind of, you know, left on their own. But, yes, we had uh, a... a, a a trainer, but a Hungarian guy by the name of Billy Govoic, mm-hmm. uh, who the Red Wings brought in, and you know would come into our dressing room, into the weight room, and and uh, you know implement some programs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, also, uh, Brian Trache was in the league. How was he to play against Brian Trache? Uh, Brian Trache was unreal. Uh, I remember uh, uh, taking. He, he was young. He was you know nineteen, twenty year old, twenty one year old kid. Um, taking a face-off against me, and he got waved out of the face-off, and he said to the linesman, oh, sorry, sir. And I thought to myself, sir? Like, <laughs> you know, you could, you could tell the respect he had, uh, you know, for the game and for the officials and wow. for other players and that. You could tell that he was going to be great. 
Wow, you just don't see that. No, you don't see that anymore. No. And uh, I've done some charity events with him, and uh-huh. uh, to this day, he's uh, you know first class act. Yeah, I, I've seen him play. He's a phenomenal skater. When I went to watch the Islanders practice, I pointed, picked him out right out of the crowd of the te- in the team. Just like he stood out the way he skated. It yeah. was so fast. <laughs> yeah, and his yeah his knowledge. He could, he was an all around player. Yeah. Uh, the Stanley Cup uh, winning team was the most was the Canadians in the 70s. I mean, they won four cups in a row. Uh, when you guys played them, did you have a certain strategy to defend against them against compared to other teams? Was there a different strategy against them? Uh, you know, I remember at our meetings, uh, you know, morning meetings or whatever, the coach would emphasize, you know, what's, which lines to, to look out for and, you know, what defensemen, you know, to look out for but uh you know once the game started it was hard to contain them and and uh as you know speaking of the Montreal Canadiens as I said Detroit wasn't very good in the 70s you know a lot of coaching changes a lot yeah. of general manager changes um you know there was a bit of turmoil there but we did make the playoffs one year and we beat the Atlanta Flames which are now the Calgary Flames mm-hmm. we beat them in a best of three and our second round we come up against the Canadians so we I believe it was in 78 76 or 78 and we go to Montreal and we split and we thought oh my god like we got them right where we want them we got a game in Montreal and we came back came back to Detroit and they beat us 9-1 Nine one Ooh. and six nothing. I think, <laughs> and I remember, I remember Scotty Bowman putting Lafleur on the ice with like two minutes left because he had two goals and three assists, and he wanted him to get the hat trick. Oh man! Uh, <laughs> but that's how he kept those players hungry and uh, and kept them on on his side. Yeah, Lafleur can really skate too. Oh my God, he was yeah, he was a good player. Him and Lemaire and Steve Shutt. Yeah, they just had so much depth and yeah. and their defense and Ken Dryden and yeah. you know the tradition they built there. Yeah, very defensive oriented. I don't think they had too many fifty goal scorers over the years, but, but no, that's what no. I say. It was like a balanced, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, and that's what you win with. Yeah, it's just with the all the you know the scouting. I think their scouting was really good and from you know from yeah. taking all these guys. Yeah, yeah, they were strong throughout. Yeah, and uh, you also played against Wayne Gretzky in his rookie year, correct? I played against Wayne uh, Gretzky uh, in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. Um, Detroit was going into uh, Edmonton to play, and and, uh, back then there uh, there weren't as many games, so there was a lot of morning skates and morning meetings. So uh, apparently uh, Oilers had a morning skate, and, and he was fixing his sticks getting them ready for the night for that night and he was asking some of the veteran players uh kevin lowe and and lee fogelin and 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 that uh you know about detroit he said uh, you know i know their record's not very good and you know who do they have in their team and you know getting himself getting some info on the team yeah. so uh, i believe it was uh, lee fogelin said to him uh well they you're probably going to end up playing against this Polonic kid uh, from the Red Wings, number eight. He's not very big, but he's very tough. But uh, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll handle it. So the game started that night, and I, I started the game because uh, the coach wanted to match uh, Lions. Yeah. I was playing against Gretzky, and and uh, we do the national anthem, and I'm at center ice doing up my strap on my helmet and here comes Semenko, Lee Fogelin and a couple other guys skate through the circle and said Polo you touched the great one tonight you're dead <laughs> <laughs> they really protected him well that's what they said they told him he said don't worry we'll look after it so that's what they looked after it. Yeah. and I, I if I remember right I think we kept it close I think it was like 5-3 we lost oh. And I was all over Gretzky, but he still ended up with four assists. <laughs> wow. wow. He's talented. i got to ask you this, and you can answer if you want or not. Was there an unwritten rule not to touch him? Like, if you remember Bill McCreary, he checked them at center ice and kind of knocked them out. I don't know if it was a concussion or not, but... As much, 
as much as I hate to admit it, um, yeah, you didn't go out of your out of your way. It's like playing against Gordy Howe when he was forty five or fifty years yeah. old. You know, like how you know you don't want to hurt no. an icon like that, and you know you play him hard and that, but but you're not you're not you're not vicious or you're not you know you're not. There's no attempt to injure. Yeah, I mean, he's drawing in the money. I mean, people come in to watch, selling out. Well, there's no, there's no question you're going to play uh, other players, less heralded players, harder than you're going to play him. Yeah. At, at the same win. time, yeah, at the same time, you don't want him to embarrass you either. No. Yeah, it's, that's what I'm saying. Like, you got to play him hard, but there's a fine line of, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking hockey history. That's what I like to do, bring back hockey history on my channel. Okay, well, we always, got lots, we always got lots of stories. Yeah, it's awesome. I appreciate it. You have a great one. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jack. Thank you. You're welcome.